June 28th garden update. Uh, mainly for my tomatoes and uh, Malabar spinach. Um, this is my new uh, area I put just outside my back door. Um, I did all cherry tomatoes. Two cherry tomato plants and I've got four strings coming down here. But it's only two plants but I'm training it with five vines and you can say you can see that it's pretty much filled up the the entire trail is here and it's still going up um, I just took a vacation for a week and came back and pretty amazed at how much it's grown but the uh, the flowers have really uh, matured and put up a bunch of new um, flowers since I've been gone so I'm gonna have tons of cherry tomatoes here this is ending up being a really nice location you can see I'm getting some of these massive flower clusters. This one just started putting down a ton. I ended up clipping the tip of it. It kept on wanting to put more and more out. It's trying to grow a whole new vine here, but that one cluster has probably 40 uh, tomatoes on it, or it will once it matures. And you can see some of these others. They just look really nice. The clusters on them. Some of these older ones I've been harvesting off of already. You can see as it goes up, it's just cluster after cluster of these really long, healthy flowers, which I'm, I'm very pleased, especially being this is a brand new bed. Um, I mean, I don't have, I think it's just like a half compost, uh, you know, some vermiculite and some peat moss, I think. I can't remember what I put in there, but it's about half compost, so. Um, being a new bed, I'm very happy with it. And as you go up, you see the more flowers coming up there, so I'm sure I'll have tons of cherry tomatoes off this one as it matures even more. Um, I'm gonna have so many there, I'm not too worried about the birds getting to them. It's mainly the, the big uh, tomatoes, my bigger plants over here, that have to be pretty vigilant about, or vigilant about the, uh, the birds getting them, because Especially here in North Carolina, we have some really dry days and um, when the birds don't have anything to drink, they go for those tomatoes. But I did harvest a few here. I'm going to harvest uh, some more here in a minute. But these are, I think, German Johnsons. And here's a massive you know, multi-flower one that came out. Uh, I think that's a chocolate stripe here. Um, front yard, I got some peppers, which those are doing good, but I am starting to get a little bit of the um, blossom rot, end rot, whatever you call that, and that's usually just from lack of calcium, so I need to get some more calcium in there. Last, last year I put just a handful of lime next to them, and that worked out well, so I'm going to do the same thing this year. I just need to get out there and do it. Um, well, these tomatoes, I've got a cherry tomato on the corner here, which I get a little more sun than that other location, so I am seeing a little bit bigger cherry tomatoes, but I'm really happy with this. I mean, look at this. Redunculus. Redunculus. And just full of clusters. I think these are the hybrid sweet 100 hybrids. I like to use the hybrids for the uh, cherry tomatoes since they do so well. Um, here are my tomatoes. I've harvested a bunch. You can see I started clearing out the bottoms of these. I see I got a bird in there right now. Probably looking for a tomato to get to. I see you, bird. I got pantyhose wrapping around these and bags. You can't get in it. What you doing over there? Here, get out of here. Um, but these, you can see, I've got the tomato. I've got these little footies that I got off of Amazon. It's just dis disposable socks. It's basically small little pantyhose that I wrap around them 
and that has been working good. Even though they turn red, I guess they come over here and it either throws them off or the texture they just don't like. Who knows, but it's working. But I'm about to harvest these. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight monsters that I'm gonna harvest. You can see all these are ready to harvest too. And even though you can see the red through it, um, for whatever reason, the birds don't mess with it. And this one, I've got a whole cluster that I couldn't wrap up. I probably need to cut a hole in it to let it drain. But my solution for this was to wrap it up in a whole bag. So let's see what happened here. This is the first time I've tried this, but it was such a big cluster. Instead of messing with it and mucking with it, with this pantyhose, I just wrapped it in a whole bag. And it seems to be doing good. They're starting to turn now. So I'll keep that wrapped up. But I think that's a good way to do it too. Just get you a whole bag. If you got a big cluster and you don't want to wrap them individually, just get you a plastic bag and cut you a hole in it so it can drain. But that should do a good job. But all of these I've got going to single lines going up. And there, I'm not too, I'm not too happy with the cluster. I'd like to see more clusters, but you know, this just goes to show the how prolific the cherry tomatoes are compared to the bigger tomatoes. The bigger tomatoes are a little more finicky when it comes to setting fruit, especially in the warmer areas here in North Carolina. That cherry tomato is completely loaded, full of blossoms, not dropping any blossoms. And the bigger tomatoes here, they did really good in the beginning because I had a lot of rain in the early spring, got a good early start on them. And they really, I got a lot of fruit on the bottom, but as you can see, as you go up, I just don't have as much fruit setting on them. Uh, the ones that did, I'm getting like one here, two there. Um, it's just not quite as much. But I have hopes for them. I'm gonna keep on training them as they go up. Keep on trimming that bottom, keep the blight from getting too far up on them to keep them healthy as I can. Um, I probably need to get in here and I'm not getting as much blight on these over here, but these, the ones that matured a little bit quicker, I got blight quicker. But as these go up, I'll keep on adding these clips you see these clips, they hold onto the line and wrap around the uh, focus in there. Just place them every so often around the plant and just let it grow all the way up and try to keep them watered. But um, I think this is going to work really good. The pantyhose, the bags. Uh, last year I was just really disheartened a little bit because of the And here's the cherry tomatoes, or the ground. Mmm, I love those things. I gotta plant a ton of those next year. They're so good. Um, that's a ground cherry. But, you know, last year I had just so many issues with birds that I got really discouraged. I've been just discouraged the last 10 years, really. Because they get so many of my, my tomatoes. But the, t the pantyhose and the bags, as long as I can get out here and stay in front of them, I think that's going to help a lot. Um, and I'm going to try to keep trying to keep some water here for them. From what I understand, the main thing, they're hitting those tomatoes because they're thirsty on these really dry days. So I just need to make sure I keep some uh, water there for them. Um, the uh, Malabar spinach is doing great. So I had a couple locations I'm growing it this year, just since it's the first year I'm growing it, just to see where it grows best. And it seems like it's growing everywhere well um, in my backyard. I don't have a ton of direct sun, so uh, I think the partially shaded, partial sun is a good growing location for that that plant. But uh, the fellow that was taking care of my garden when I was gone, he was watering it for me. He said he ate a lot of these. And I can tell there's a lot of uh, leaves eaten off of it, but um, 
this has grown great but I grew these two as main stems just let them grow up I didn't uh, try to branch them off and they grew up as one vine as you can see they're starting to put off some lateral pieces here too um, and I planted I either planted or had one grow uh, I dropped a seed I can't remember which one but um, you can see this purple vine going up and it's outgrowing the tomato plant so I'm gonna get that one growing up there I, I, it's a good plant to grow with your tomato plants because it really doesn't take up too much Sun from the tomatoes you can see this one right here it started wrapping around this plant it got loose and started going up so I'll have that one going up my, my tomatoes that might be an experiment that I do next year is just plant them a bunch of Malabar with my tomatoes what the heck's going on back there yeah squirrel fight um, but all this uh, this is where all my peas were my sugar snap peas and uh, this Malabar was I planted about when the peas were um, uh, you know, maturing so I pulled those out as soon as those came out uh, this stuff really took took off. You can see the entire bottom; they're really maturing. And just in the the week that I was gone, they've gone from hardly even starting to growing <laughs> three feet. I really can't believe how fast this stuff grows. I mean, as long as it's watered and it's got a good medium to grow in, it just takes off. And this is the last place I've got it growing here, which is probably the shady shadier part of it, and it's growing just as well. Um, I tried a couple different experiments about pinching it when it's young and making it grow laterally more and, and that does uh, affect the growth, the lateral growth. So I think it's a good practice probably to about half of them or if not more pinch off the early tips and let it, it, it really it sends out a signal and makes more lateral growth come out of it. Um, but I really like this Malabar spinach. Um, this is the first year I've done it, so I'm going to save a bunch of these seeds and plant a bunch of it next year. It's going to become a yearly thing for me. Um, but that's about it. The main thing I want to do is just see this, show those tomatoes and how they're doing and just how I'm protecting them because I know birds can be a really big pain in the ass for tomato growers. Um, and I've got a nice... Uh, older neighborhood here just with tons of habitat for birds so they're everywhere I mean the newer neighborhoods where you just got clear-cut neighborhoods and new vegetation you probably don't have as many birds but these older neighborhoods gardening and birds can be a chore and I think as long as you get in front of them have those pantyhose on them or tie a bag around your your tomatoes um, as a great alternative to doing an entire bird netting and I did bird netting one year, and bird netting is a pain in the ass because you just have stuff growing all through it. It's once it gets, it becomes one big mat of vegetation all tied up in your netting, and you can barely get to your tomatoes. Um, and then at the end of the year, just cleaning it all up is a pain in the ass. So this is definitely a better option. Um, I'd recommend growing a bunch of cherry tomatoes because they're they put off so many that the birds can't get to all of them and just grow you a handful of uh, big tomatoes and uh, keep them protected the best you can. But uh, that's about it for right now. I'll keep the tomatoes updated as they grow on up here. This is becoming the, the more difficult time of the season for me since it's so dry, so hot. Um, setting the blooms is really tough this time of year, but we'll see. I think as long as I can keep that blight away, keep them watered, they'll keep going and toward the end of the summers where I'll have another big flush of them hopefully as long as they don't get too tall peace out